Hello there and welcome to another video. My name is Riley and today I'm going to be talking about a cryptocurrency which I believe has the potential to do at least 10x by the end of 2018. The cryptocurrency which I'm talking about is none other than NAS. I'm talking about Nebulous. And as always, before I get into this video, I just, I'm going to put these headings down here and put them in the description box below with a timestamp next to them. So if you want to see a certain part of the video, you can go click on the timestamp. As always, I'm not a financial advisor and this is just purely for educational purposes. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it, shall we? So what is the Nebulous platform? Well, Nebulous is a public open source blockchain platform which provides search framework for all the blockchains. The goal of the project is to be the search engine for producers to find the right smart contracts, digital assets and dApps they need to develop their own projects. It is also a platform for developers to create entities on the blockchain, whether this be dApps or smart contracts or digital assets. Now one of the questions that people always ask when they're looking into this cryptocurrency is, is it the Google of the blockchain? And I've taken this, this is a direct quote straight from the Nebulous website and the Nebulous team. And it says here, it is to a certain extent. Both Nebulous and Google are search engines, but they're built for different purposes. Nebulous is used to search smart contracts, dApps and other user assets on the blockchains, while Google is used to search for everyday information on the internet. In addition, Nebulous is being built on a decentralized search framework with open source algorithms, verifiable computing and distributed data stores. So what I took from that is, yes, it's not directly trying to be like a Google of the blockchain. However, as we'll see, in its sort of applications that it provides, it could be, it could serve as one of its use cases as a Google of the blockchain indirectly by using the blockchains on the search engine uh, comparable to websites and apps. So, some features of Nebulous. And the first one I want to talk about is Proof of Devotion or POD. And what POD is, it's basically a blend of proof of stake, like Ethereum is looking to adopt and Proof of Importance, or POI, and you would know what Proof of Importance is if you watch my NEM video. So, Proof of Devotion uses the something called the Nebulous Rank, which is something that I'll get into in a second. And it uses this as the measure of, measure of value to identify the accounts with great devotion to the ecosystem. So basically all it's saying is it's a, trying to rank these um, applications and accounts uh, based on the community contribution that they are giving to the ecosystem. And it grants them fair chances to be a bookkeeper node. And if you've watched my Neo video, you would know what a bookkeeper node is to avoid the monopoly in bookkeeping. And so, like I, like I just said, it's similar to what Neo uses, but it has that proof of importance added. So it's got that devotion to the community as well as the proof of stake. And why proof of devotion is good is because proof of work is inefficient and causes centralization, whilst proof of stake makes the rich richer and causes reduced liquidity. Okay, so now time to get into what I was talking about before with Nebulous Rank. And just how like Google rank, ranks their pages, Nebulous will provide blockchain users a way to find the most relevant information in the blockchain world with Nebulous Rank. The, the NR of a blockchain entity will depend on three things. First, liquidity, so basically how much is being used. Propagation, and so this is basically the network quality they're putting out and the, uh, I guess, the reliability of the network. And then interoperability, and this is sort of operating with other platforms. Okay, so the next feature I want to talk about is Developer Incentive Protocol, otherwise known as DIP. And what it is, is basically in pre-specified block intervals, when developers have an NR value that is higher than a specific threshold, the DIP shall reward them corresponding developer incentives. And these incentives shall be recorded on the blocks by bookkeepers. This keeps developers incentivized to create valuable smart contracts and dApps, and in turn creates a valuable, uh, a valuable positive feedback loop for the community. And so they'll be rewarded in NAS tokens as an incentive, as a financial incentive, I should say. The next one I want to talk about is Nebulous Force. 
And as the community grows, protocols updatability will be open to the community. So it will be a democratized system of upgrading the Nebulous protocol. And according to the user's NR rank and community voting mechanism, the community will determine the Nebulous evolution direction and its update objectives. And basically what this does, it eliminates the possibility and problems of contentious hard forks like we have previously seen on the Bitcoin blockchain. Users on the main chain can invest on subchains to test newly offered NAS with the subchain technology. They can also keep their assets on the main chain while waiting for evolutionary benefits as the main chain updates smoothly. If the chain is supported, the new subchain, it can merge seamlessly with the main chain and the newly upgraded protocol can carry on. So it's not this big, quick, abrupt process. Um, it's like you have, you create a subchain and that basically becomes your trial chain. And if that trial chain is successful, it will be adopted to the main chain or merged with the main chain. However, if the trial chain is not supported, the main chain will continue to run as normal until a new supported trial chain has been created. So why is it useful? And the biggest reason I put why is it useful here is it makes, it solves a one big problem in the blockchain and that is accessibility. And the amount of dApps being developed will only decrease in an exponentially large number. So this is like on the websites on the internet is becoming much harder to sort of locate a website because there's just so many. It's like, what do I choose from? Also, it provides a medium to navigate easily through the blockchain and it promotes an ease of use, which promotes uh, eventual adoption. Also, it delivers this in a decentralized manner, which is both secure and equitable. The team in the community behind Nebulous, and I'm really sorry to anyone of Chinese origin out here or anyone who speaks Chinese, because I'm really going to butcher these names when I say them. And so the first one, I think the founder is Hitter Zhu, and basically he was the founder of Nebulous, and he was also a founder of Neo, or which was previously known as AntShares. We have Robin Zhong, uh, who is a co-founder. He's a, formula, he's a former senior development director at Dolphin Browser and leader of Game Division. Then we have Eero Wang, who's a co-founder. He was also a Neo co-founder. Jiren Liu, uh, former work for Google, work for IBM. Then we have people working for Airbnb, more at Google, uh, core developers working formerly for Alibaba and other big companies. So they have a very, very strong team, especially for a crypto currency of this size and they have a lot of experience which they can bring to the project and so I, I'm really confident in the team and I'm excited to see where they take the project. Also the community it's only a very small community at the moment because the cryptocurrency is only very new but I'm sure as it gets more noticed and more mainstream attention it will really start to explode in the community. So buying and storing uh, Nebulous and to buy Nebulous, this is really the one downfall for me currently. And why this is downfall is because it's not really on any major exchanges that we use here. Like, I'm not on any of these exchanges, nor do I want to be on any of these exchanges. So it does make it hard for people, uh, especially in the Western world, um, who are on the bigger exchanges to get this currency and to it also makes it harder to promote good liquidity out of these currencies. So yeah, the, the one drawback I have to this currency currently is the exchanges, but hopefully in the, f in the near future, they can get onto some more major exchanges and get some larger trading volume. And in terms, in terms of storing, there's only one storing option or storage option you have at the moment, and that is to put it on my Ether wallet. And basically, this is either a web wallet or you can use a hardware wallet. But I would always recommend to use a Ledger Nano S as it is much more secure than using a web wallet. So the future of Nebulous. And there's only a couple of things that are highlighted on the roadmap. And the first one is a big one. It's launching the main net in quarter one of 2018. So that's going to be a big thing to look out for Nebulous and a big step in the right direction. Also, they'll have their self-evolution function release 
and this is in quarter four 2018 and basically the self evolution function is basically that community upgrade protocol the nebulous force protocol that I was talking about before so my thoughts on nebulous and really I think this is a great project and an un and it's extremely undervalued for what it is aiming to accomplish this is because it is targeting an original yet needed niche and it doesn't really have much competition in the space if any and the niche that I'm talking about um, to sort of stay, take a step back here we have two parts really of a blockchain platform two macro parts and one part is the back end and this is to do more with the technology and how a platform functions and what makes it tick and with this with the back end problems comes things like scalability problems and security problems and these are problems which are being trying to solve now as you can see with a lot of different scaling solutions coming out and different blockchains offering different scalability options but once we solve the scalability solutions which I'm sure we will over the next few years or so we will have to look at the problems we have in the front end and the front end is basically the user interface so how the user interacts with the platform and for me there's two big problems we have to get over two big hurdles we have to get over in terms of the front end one is accessibility and two is interoperability and there are other projects targeting interoperability like uh, Icon which is another great project which I'll probably do another review on in the near future but one of the big things we're going to have to do especially to gain mass adoption is accessibility and accessibility can be broken down in a little further into a, f a few different categories but this is a really big part of accessibility and although not that relevant yet, it will be very, very, very relevant in the future. So that's why I'm so confident with this platform. Also, yeah, so that's, like I said, it is a not that, not necessarily that relevant now, but like I said, it will be a huge thing in the future. So I'm going to give this term, this coin, a very, very, very long term hodl. Okay, so quickly looking at the charts and to be honest there's not really much technical analysis I can do on here we can see that the MACD and the RSI are looking strong and we can see that we got a nice bounce off the um, Korea FUD after that occurred but there's one it's only a new coin so there's not much price history but also the reason um, that I'm really can't do much analysis on it is because it hasn't had much history obviously but it's not on many exchanges and the question, will I buy this coin? Do I own this coin? The answer that, to that question is no, I don't have it and no, I will not be buying it in the near future. And although I really do love the project, the one thing that's stopping me from buying it is the fact that it's not on any major exchanges. And like I said before, the exchanges that it's on, I do not necessarily want to sign up onto them either. So basically, what I'm gonna do is just watch this keep a sort of watchful eye on it and especially once it does get onto some bigger exchanges I'll be looking at it very very closely and looking to add to this on the dip because I want to really add this to my long-term portfolio but that's just my opinion you can pick it up now I'm sure if you held it for the very long term it's going to go up anyway I just that's just my process in thinking of it because the exchanges the lack of exchanges I just really want to see how the price reacts to it once it gets onto some bigger exchanges with some more volume. So that's going to do it for this video. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below on another cryptocurrency review you would like to see me do. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. And as always, I'll catch you next time.